first started coming, you couldn't do what we're about to do. So the way to go through Hezekiah's Tunnel, there were steps going down on the outside, and the entrance was over here where the water source came from. And back in the days when, you know, it still happens, but here it was happening in Jerusalem where people were throwing rocks and stuff. Yeah, my mom and our guide had rocks thrown at them walking around, because I was going through Hezekiah's Tunnel. Fortunately, we had a small group at that time. But every time I go through now, I'm so thankful that we don't have to deal with any of that, because it was a bit dicey in those days, and a lot of people didn't do it at all for that reason. But I liked seeing the real thing, so I insisted that we go. OK, guys. The Temple Mount over here, okay, exactly like the cell phone that we saw from the Mount of Olives flat area. We have on the north part of the Temple Mount, we have the Pool of Bethesda. What's happening in the Pool of Bethesda? Miracles. Miracles. John chapter 6, Yeshua healed the paralyzed guy. And over there, we have the Pool of Siloam, we saw in the movie. Two pools, two sides of the Temple. Yeshua healed just two people. I believe maybe more, but it's written on the Bible, two people in Jerusalem, in two pools, two sides of the temple. Mm. One blind guy and paralyzed guy. Mm. Why it's so important? When David came to concrete this city 1,000 years before, he was around and the Jebusite sit here and they said, we will put the blind people and the paralyzed people on the wall and they will kick you out, they will win you. David took over the city, but Yeshua came 1,000 years later to break the curse. Mm. He healed two people in Jerusalem. Mm. One full of Bethesda, wow. one full of Silo. Mm. Now what we're going to do, we will go down actually to the area of the palace. We will walk down, we will see some stuff and go all the way slowly, slowly I will go beside of the hill because what they did, they took the resource of the water and they put it into the city all the way underground until here. So we will go in this area and maybe in half an hour we're going to separate, okay? But until that time we'll be together. There's one thing I wanted to say about King Solomon since he brought up that King Solomon built uh, homes for all his wives over here before there was ever a king. And remember, the Lord's will was that he would be king. He didn't want him to have a king, but they wanted to be like all the other nations. So in the law, in the book of Deuteronomy, is written down that when you have a king, there were three things that they were not to do. Multiply wise for themselves, to go back down to Egypt to get horses for themselves, and to multiply gold for themselves. And he said, if you do that, he'll turn your heart away from the Lord. So what does Solomon do? He goes to Egypt and gets horses. What was Megiddo? One of his chariot cities. And you can still see this, the stables there from Solomon's horses that he had brought from Egypt. What did he do? He multiplied wise to himself. What did he do? Multiply gold to themselves. Where Here's what the Bible says. Gold was as common as the, as the rocks and stones in Jerusalem. Look around you. There's a lot of rock and stones, isn't there? So much so that they stopped keeping track. What? Okay, we're coming. We're going now. We're, we're leaving. Guys,